Hi everybody. So in this lesson we're going to do the binomial distribution. Now the first thing to note, the binomial distribution has to have two outcomes. That's what the bi part of binomial means. I think bicycle binomial two. So bi is two, two outcomes. Think of flipping a coin. It's either heads or tails. But it also has to have these four properties. We need a fixed number of trials. The trials have to be independent. We need two outcomes and the probability of success stays the same. Now the flipping a coin example works perfectly well here. Well, as long as you said, I'm going to flip a coin 10 times. Now I have a fixed number of trials. So the trial is the flipping the coin. The trials are independent because it doesn't matter what your first flip, what you get for your first flip, that doesn't affect what you get for your second flip, if that makes sense. And then two outcomes, it's either heads or tails. And the probability of success stays the same. Yes, it does. It's always 50-50 for each toss of the coin. Okay, now I, I actually don't want to do the tossing coin example because it's one, a little bit boring. And two, I don't want a situation where the probability is 50-50. I'd prefer a situation where the probability isn't 50-50. So I'm going down the free throw route. So Tom is going to take 10 free, throw, free, free throws. So that's your fixed number of trials is 10. The probability he scores a given shot is 0 0.65. So we're going to assume that that probability stays the same. It's always 0 0.65. So that's like, let's say, well, a pro NBA player might have, well, the like the best free throw percentages out there, are like 0.9 or like 90%. So 0.65, is that any good? Um, well, it's okay. It's probably it's probably better than me, to be honest, but it's probably not very good if you were a pro basketball player. Now it then says, let X be the number of free throws scored. So we have a fixed number of trials, they're 10. The trials are independent, so we're going to assume they're independent. You could argue they're not independent because if you, if you start scoring, then your confidence gets higher and then that you're more likely to score or if you if you miss five in a row your confidence is destroyed and you you're more likely to miss that's debatable but we're going to assume they're totally independent two outcomes yes he's either score going to score or he isn't going to score and then yeah we're saying the probability stays the same okay let's okay before i do this th these a to h questions i'm going to show you what what we're going to write we're going to say x is binomially distributed, right? So this means x, x is our number of throws. This is our random variable. This means it is binomially distributed. Now n and p, you'll see here, n is number of trials, number of trials. And the p is the probability, probability, of success. So this is straight from the formula booklet. You get this, right? So NP, the how many, what's N here? How many trials are we, are, is Tom doing? How many free throws? Well, it's 10. And what's the probability of success? The probability scores is 0 0.65. So uh, just writing that down will often get you a mark because it shows you understand that it's a binomial distribution and you understand the number of trials and the and the probability. Okay, so let's let's do each of these. Now, luckily, this can all be done with your calculator, and it's fairly straightforward once you know where the buttons are. So, what's the probability that x equals five? So, what this means is, what's the probability that he gets five out of ten free throws? Now, you might think, well, um, five out of ten that must be 50-50. Well, that's definitely not right because the probability scores a given shot is 0 0.65. So it's not going to be 50-50. Or you might even say, okay, well then it's 0 0.65, but it's not. It's it's a really it's it's actually a really complicated problem. And without a without a calculator, um well let me just give let me give you an idea of how hard this problem is. So let's say one means he scores, zero means he doesn't score. What's the probability he gets five? Well, he could score one, two, three, four, five, and then miss five, two, three, four, five. 
And we could find the probability of this happening. It's 0.65 times 0.65 times 0.65 times 0.65 times 0.65 times 0.35 times 0.35 times 0.35 times 0.35 times 0.35. That would give me the probability of this happening. But that's not the only thing that could happen. I could also, well, Tom could also do this, miss this one, score that one, and then miss those. That's five. But he could also miss, 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 score, score, miss, score, score, miss, score. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or, well, how many different outcomes are there here? There's loads. There's actually, there's actually ten. Choose five outcomes. Now I'm not going to get into this because I want to show you how easy it is to do with your calculator but there's just many 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 different situations that can happen and you have to find the probability of all of them so it's, a, it's a quite a complicated problem but we're going to make it I'm going to show you how this is quite easy. So calculator I'm going to go menu probability distributions and I'm going to go to binomial now there's two. There's two that we're going to use. Binomial PDF or binomial CDF. PDF stands for probability distribution function. That's for when it e like probability of x equals 5. CDF is for the ones like well part b there greater than 7 that would be CDF or less than 3 or between 2 and 6. That's CDF because it stands for cumulative distribution functions where you accu uh, accumulate a, a, a number of um, outcomes together. So PDF is when it equals and CDF is when it's greater or less than. So in this case I'm going to do PDF. The number of trials is 10. That's n. The probability of success is 0 0.65. We have that. And the x value is 5. That's what x equals 5. Press enter and I get the answer. It's 0 0.15357. 0 0.15357. 0.15357. Okay, so it's it's not likely that he will score. It's not likely that he'll score five baskets, but that's because he might score four, or he might score six, or he might score three, whatever. That's the probability that he score five exactly. Part B. The probability that he score greater than seven. Greater than seven. I'm going to do menu. Probability. Now you should note it's also in statistics. It's um, if you press statistics distributions, you get the same thing. So it's in both. I'm going to go to binomial, but this time CDF because it's greater than seven. Now this is quite nice because I can put number of trials is ten. Um, probability of success is zero point six five. That stays the same. Now he gives me a lower bound and an upper bound. Now be careful. If he says greater than seven. There's a big difference here between greater than seven or greater or equal to seven. If if I if Tom's throwing some free throws and he says I bet you I'm going to score more than seven, what does what's the minimum he has to score to score more than seven? Well, it's eight. More than seven is eight. And then the upper bound is ten because he's only taking ten free throws. So we're basically find the probability he scores eight or 9, or 10 out of 10. Press enter, and there I have it. 0 0.261607, 0 0.261607. That's the probability that he scores more than 7, which would be 8, 9, or 10 free throws. Part C. So I'm doing a, quite, a, quite a lot of them because there's quite a lot of different types they can give you, and I just want to make sure we do all of them. So less than or equal to 3. If Tom said, so same thing, I'm going to do menu, probability, distributions. That's quite annoying. I just clicked the wrong thing. Menu, probability, distributions. Sometimes I actually like to press the, um, you can actually press the, the number. So 5 and then CDF is B. Okay, so it's 10. It's 0 0.65. Now, if he says, well, if I said, Tom, I bet you, I bet you, you score three, you score less than or equal to three throws. Well, that means 
I'm saying I bet you he'll score 0, 1, 2, or 3. So these lower bounds and upper bounds are important. The lower bound in this case is 0. The upper bound is 3. If it said less than 3, the upper bound would be 2. So again, be very careful there. Press enter, 0 point. 0, 2, 6, 0, 2, 4. So look, that's like less than 3%. So it's highly unlikely he'll score less than or equal to 3 throws which makes sense because he's got quite a good shooting average. He should be scoring more than three out of 10. Okay, part D. What's the probability that, that X is greater or equal to four? So note the difference between these two. TI Inspire, menu. Uh, probability, distributions, and B. Now I have 10. 0.65, more than or equal to 4. What's the lower bound? Well, 4, because he says more than or equal to 4. So 4 is the lower bound. The upper bound is 10, because he's only taking 10 throws. OK, 0 0.973976, 0 0.973976. And if you actually th look at this, less than or equal to 3 and more than or equal to 4, this plus this actually equals one. Look at it. Six. This is, yeah. This this plus this equals one, and the reason is because less than or equal to three or more than or equal to four is everything that can happen. It's zero, one, two, and three, or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Part E. The probability that x is less than one. Okay. What's the probability that x is less than one? Now. Yes, you could use CDF here and your lower bound is zero, but your upper bound would also be zero. So the probability that he scores less than one free throw is actually the same as the probability he scores um, zero free throws. So I'm gonna find the probability he scores zero. So that's five, five, B. Okay, um, all right, I can do it this way, it's the same thing. Number of trials is 10. Probability of success is 0.65. Now the lower bound is zero and the upper bound is zero. So this is exactly like doing PDF with x equals zero. Now I'm expecting a very low number here because it's highly unlikely he's gonna miss all the free throws. And yeah, look, tiny number, 0 0.000028. 0 0.000028. So it's highly, highly unlikely he'll, he'll miss them all. Okay, last, well, last one of these type. X greater than two and less than or equal to six. Okay, it's CDF. So I'm gonna do menu five, five B. So probability CDF, because it's a range of values. 10.65, this is gonna stay the same. Now, greater than two and less than or equal to six. So these ones are just simply tricky. He has to score more than two, so what's the lower bound? Three. And it's less than or equal to six, so the upper bound is six. Now, try and get that understood in your head because that always causes problems. Greater than two means the lower bound is three, and less than or equal to six means the upper bound is six. Press enter, 0.481352. 481352. So it's nearly nearly 50% that he's going to score between, well, greater than two and less than six. Okay, fine. Next bit is the expected value. So the, how much would do we expect him to get? Now the expected value is simply n times p. Now that's quite easy to, to understand or why that's the case or to conceptualize. Think if I, if I'm tossing a coin and I flip it a hundred times, how many heads would you expect to get and how many tails would you expect to get? Well, you'd expect to get 50 heads and 50 tails. If I, times, if I um, flipped it 500 times, how many heads would I expect to get? Well, 250 heads and 250 tails, which is 500 times P, which is a half. 500 times a half gives me 250. So all I need to do here is multiply 10 times 0 0.65.
my expected value is 6.5. I don't round it to 6 or 7 or, any, or anything like that. The expected value is 6.5, even though obviously you can't score um, you can't score 6.5 shots out of 10. You either get 6 or 7, but the expected value is like the mean. Even Look, it is the mean. It says it here. And remember, if you're getting if you're getting the mean of a of a bunch of numbers, it doesn't have to be like the mean number of uh, siblings in the class. You can you can get two point four seven eight, even though obviously you can't have point four seven eight children, something like that. Okay, and H, this one, um, the variance. I'm actually not going to explain. And try and prove this to you because it's actually quite complicated. So I'm just going to tell you there's a formula. There it is. This is the formula. It's in the formula booklet. It's the variance, but only for binomial distribution. And this is the mean only for binomial distribution. So I do 1 minus p, and then n is 10, p is 0 0.65, and I do 1 minus 0 0.65. And I'm just going to do all that on my calculator. Um, let's move that up here. It's 10 times 0 0.65 times 1 minus 0 0.65. And I get 2.275. So the variance is 2.275. So that's that's like a measure of how spread out his data is. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Remember these four uh, properties that we need in order to use the binomial distribution, but, the, but they won't, often they won't tell you this is binomial distribution. And in order to realize it is binomial distribution, think about the two, that's the kind of key, the key way of, of realizing that you need to use binomial distribution. It's some kind of experiment and there's two outcomes. Either he scores or he doesn't score. Either he wins or he loses. Either it's green or it's blue. Two outcomes. Okay, see you in the next lesson.